Osio, Oshigwo Zu, welcome to the Red Road East. I'm your host, Fierce Truth Seeker. And today, oh man, we are going to have a very, very good treat for you. An elder who is no stranger to our studios, uh, who will be joined with us again. And she's going to drop some very heavy pearls of wisdom. So don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Yes, okay. So we're back, and we are joined with the elder, the very knowledgeable elder, Blue Sky. Blue Sky, Oshio. Oshio, it's a pleasure again to be here. Uh, further to say that uh, I uh, ask Great Spirit uh, from the four directions that all good comes from this uh, presentation that uh, you are giving here today. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. So the last time that you were here, mm -hmm. uh, the topic was Thanksgiving, yes. the true meaning of the holiday, mm -hmm. and we kind of left off with you in the middle of some very, very powerful, powerful information, mm -hmm. and I wanted you to come back because the amount of knowledge that you have about our history as indigenous Americans is very vast, and I didn't want to shortchange your wisdom. So I'm inviting you to come back to pick up where you left off and also talk about another topic which relates to some of the things that you were talking about when you left off, where, where or should I say, where you left off from mm -hmm. in the last interview. And the topic for today, which we spoke about uh, earlier, is the indigenous American contribution and creation of so-called black American culture. Well, uh, a great amount of the culture that is uh, accepted as being Afrocentric from the other part of this uh, planet uh, really is not. It is indigenous to North America. Um, there was things I was talking about in regards to uh, the way in which we express ourselves, uh, uh, the way we speak to one another, uh, even the concept of us saying yo to one another is really uh, basically coming from the Chalagi or Cherokee of saying oh shio, uh, uh, the way in which we dance, uh, the way in which we walk. Uh, one of the things that I was speaking about before culturally was that um, the walk in the 70s that many people thought was an, an Afrocentric expression in actuality was a long-haired Cherokee warrior walk. Uh, the hip-like walk that is, uh, is expressed as being Afrocentric was not Afrocentric at all. In fact, it, and I believe it, it might be the James Adir book or uh, a, another uh, Cherokee book, which I can't quite remember at this time, uh, but it dealt with how the, the uh, warrior walked. And he walked with a limp and and his shoulder would dip as he walked. Now, that type of walk is not uh, the only way in which you have seen that, that uh, uh, cultural expression is in America and by those who call themselves African American. Um, we need to understand that on every part of the planet is an expression of the heartbeat of each indigenous group of people who express themselves in the format that Great Spirit wanted them to express the energy of Mother Earth. So you have the people of uh, Australia, and they have a beat. You have the people in, in the Middle East, they have a beat. You have different people from different parts of Africa. They have a, a beat uh, or a heartbeat that they are associated with our Mother Earth. The same in terms of our people here. Like, for instance, the stomp dance. The stomp dance is done differently here than it is done on the other side of the Atlantic. Um, you, it, it, it deals with the, the 
the, the, the connection with the earth, the, of Mother Earth, uh, of, of the feeling that we, we do. And today you see many um, colleges and, and different organizations having stomp uh, dance competitions. Uh, that deals with here. Uh, yes, there is a type of stomp dance in Africa, but there is also the stomp dance here. Uh, one thing that you uh, uh, made me... Well, hold, before okay. you, right. you, you, you're jumping ahead a little bit, okay. and, I, uh, and I know okay. that's on the agenda, okay. but um, before you get into that, mm -hmm. um, I wanted you to pick up where you left off with the wannabe, because okay. um, that's right. where we left off on the last show. Uh, the wannabe... Um, situation is very delicate. Uh, are we dealing with society? Are we dealing with genes? You know, are we dealing with the, the, the cultural aspects of where are we coming from with that? Now, you, you have organizations that have come up with this uh, 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 philosophy that if a native person wears their native uh, regalia, outside of being in a powwow or their native clothing outside of a powwow, they are considered a wannabe. Now, I find it to be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Native American people are who they say they are. And it is an insult to many people who have been called wannabes for wearing their native culture. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, many elders find it to be a, a total insult. They want to wear their clothing. Uh, 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 they want to wear their, the, 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 their, their uh, jewelry. Uh, why not? Uh, this is an economic thing as well. What, we don't buy anything from Native people who are making these sort of things? Mm -hmm. You know, this is not something to be hanging in a, in a museum as they would like you to do. Right. It is our culture. You have everybody on the freaking planet, excuse me, wearing European clothing, all right, and that is acceptable. But the moment that that indigenous culture wears their own clothing, we're looked upon as being wannabes. Yeah. You know, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. you now, know? how did that, now, you say there's an organization uh, so give us um, a little bit of background about this organization. There uh, is an organization, um, and actually uh, it's coming out of the West, and especially it, it is directed, I find out, more so to people in the East, mm. uh, the Eastern Native American people, that uh, they, want, they are wannabes. But the thing is, according to, um, I believe, the daughter of the last chief, when Europeans came here in the first place, she described it as a, a gigantic wave hitting the eastern coastline. So that culture for us was so bombarded with the, the, the energy of what was coming at us that a great much of our culture had disappeared or was forced from us. By the time that wave or tidal wave hit the, the Midwest and the Lakota and the Midwest tribes, they were able to some degree to hold on to an essence of who they were. Whereas here, the, 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 the I would call it the Jackson period, <laughs> uh, President Jackson, mm -hmm. uh, who said the best Indian is the dead Indian. That's right. Okay when he came along and he was fighting those and pushing all of the native people to the east, this is what we had to deal with. So the idea of us being able to hold on to something, to, to grab on to something, was, was essential to our, our, our mental and physical survival in a way, mm -hmm. you know. Um, the wannabe situation is ridiculous, going back to the fact that People here have been told not to wear their clothing and then uh, not to wear any of these other sort of things. And then going back, there is actually an organization, can't remember the name of it at this time, that goes about to all the different groups calling themselves what they call themselves, especially within the Chalagi Nation, 
uh, that these are wannabes and they should be and their organizations should be uh, disbanded. Now I do understand that there are individuals who have uh, created organizations in order to steal from the people. Yes, and that that is true, and and it gives mm -hmm. um, you know it gives a bad name you know yes. to those of us who are legitimate and who are are doing their best to to uh, uh, bring back to their uh, uh, descendants, hopefully, uh, the culture. Um, uh, so we understand where they are coming from, but nine times out of 10, it deals with a, uh, a $5 Indian uh, descendant who wishes to uh, destroy any chance of, uh, of our people ever getting a, a, retrieving that which was taking away from us, mm -hmm. you see. So uh, you've got people, just recently uh, a, a DNA test was done on a group of people and uh, they found out that nine out of ten of these people calling themselves Cherokee were Welsh, Irish, mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, Scottish. Scottish, German, mm -hmm. okay, and not one person with this particular group had one iota of indigenous uh, culture unless it was an indigenous, indigenous excuse me, to Europe. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's right. And that happened just recently. You know, uh, mm -hmm. they even wanted to be uh, saying that they were the original uh, Hebrews. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, not nothing of that which they were claiming was true. Right. <laughs> okay? Well, we're going to... Um well, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we will get into our next uh, topic of discussion, which is the indigenous American influence on, quote-unquote, black American culture. Stay tuned. Blue Sky, let's talk a little bit about the indigenous American influence on quote unquote black American culture. It's uh, because it's, uh, it's an area that, hold on, is anybody upstairs um, switching? It's, it's, an, it's an area that needs more attention and a lot of our mannerisms and culture has been attributed to the slave experience with the Africans that were brought over here via the transatlantic slave trade. However, what a lot of people don't realize is that the indigenous American influence was also a quote unquote black experience as well. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, this is something that we've spoken about before and you can, um, I'll let you elaborate. Uh, elaborate some more. Well, to get this to the point, yes, our cultures are definitely uh, uh, mixed. Uh, one side has one type of soul, and the other has another expression of soul. Um, in terms of the dance, uh, uh, that comes from our culture in terms of the stomp dancing. Uh, many people would only have it associated with uh, Africa, but there was stomp dancing here. You don't get to see a representation of it through the... Uh, in a more ethnic uh, uh, expression, because that is basically not allowed. Um, to make, uh, uh, not to make light, but if one would look at uh, uh, the famous entertainer James Brown, uh, it's a perfect example of him doing certain things on Soul Train many years ago in the way that he held himself. Uh, uh, the way that he did certain moves. These certain moves were Native American. Take a better look at what you're seeing there. Uh, there's something that you mentioned before, but I can't remember the name. Uh, I think it was the call and... Call and response. Call and response. Now, 
yes, you will hear, you've, hear, you've heard African American people or also African people possibly going and calling out a call to do something. And there would be a response by the people who are doing the dance. Uh, that was here. It was not something that was taken from somewhere else and brought here. Uh, if you uh, if you ever get a chance to see uh, the performers, and I say that lightly, in, in North or South Carolina, uh, it is represented there. Uh, you'll also see uh, there are ancient, uh, 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 older films showing the call and um, call and response. Call and, response. Yeah. and um, you need to do more research to see uh, our culture and and the way it was expressed, and, and uh, you will find that many of the, the soulfulness of what we have here was originated here. And unfortunately, uh, we're not given the credit or the understanding. Now, I think earlier I spoke to you about before about uh, uh, the walk, the, the, where the uh, so-called African-American men would have that walk, the, dip the, and the, walk the, the walk and the mm -hmm. dip. Uh, that's mentioned, I think, even in the James Adair book, uh, speaking about the long hair clan who used to show off in a way. Uh, that comes from here. That is, that is not from the other side of the world. Mm -hmm. It's from here. Right. Uh, you need to look at other things that we did. The, the pounding of the corn. That's done in, in many cultures. But uh, all of these socialisms that many uh, brown and black complexion people feel came from the other side of, uh, uh, of the, uh, uh, the pond or the Atlantic uh, were also here and we expressed ourselves. Again, um, to each indigenous people that I spoke about before, uh, there is a soul beat that is, that is designated for that tribe, that nation, that people, that continent. In China, they inhabit. The Japanese have it. You know, you, you've seen representations of it, and we are, are are given by Great Spirit to do certain types of things in order to keep the planet in 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 balance. And since now, because of the energies of the patriarchal system uh, that has uh, destroyed many of the matriarchal systems around the world. Uh, the imbalance of Mother Earth ha it shows itself. And um, these things that we were taught to do were never supposed to be stopped. You know, this is what ne is necessary for us to understand. Right. Um, you mentioned earlier um, about the cultures being mixed. Uh, can you elaborate further on that? Because I know there's different perspectives on that. Like you have uh, the perspective like uh, some authors of certain books, you know, come from the perspective, uh, like the perspective, like William Lauren Katz, who wrote the book *Black Indians*, mm -hmm. whose premise is that the darker-skinned natives are the product of African runaways and the indigenous um, populations here, and you have uh, other authors that maintain that they were those of our people that were already here and um, that there were people that came over via the transatlantic slave trade that mixed in with darker people that were already here. Can you elaborate on those particular um, points of view? Well, there was a book uh, that was written that was saying they came before Columbus is one book. Uh, you have a, the book that was mentioned by Katz uh, that speaks of that there were only black people here uh, dealing with the slave trade, which is, you know, ridiculous uh, when it comes to speaking about the California Indians who were obviously here uh, prior to the slave trade and had cultures. But my uh, dear brothers and sisters, um, there is also uh, a, a need to understand that People of color have been here, or our particular shades, have been here way far, thousands and thousands of years 
uh, prior to the uh, uh, the ice age ten thousand years ago. Uh, there is evidence here, but this is considered hidden history, mm -hmm. and because it's considered hidden history, it is not uh, 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 accepted as such. Um, there is a documentary, and you can look this up, and it deals with. Uh, uh, finding the remains in northern, the northern part of South America. And mm -hmm. they called it, they called these people Negroid. Now, they said these people were killed prior to the Ice Age. So now if they were killed prior to the Ice Age and they had Negroid features, okay, that has absolutely nothing to do with the, 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 the slave trade of 5, 000, 500 years ago. Right. Now, there are two descendants left of the black uh, peoples that were here in the Americas from in South America, and they found them, mm -hmm. okay? And the bloodline suggests that they were the same people of uh, uh, the indigenous people of Australia. Now, uh, I have been lucky to meet an elder, uh, a very uh, a beautiful, dark complexion, black, pearl eyes, and he was between the age of 80 and 90 years old. Mm. And uh, I believe that he was a Polk, a Missouri Indian. Mm. Um, I later had did some research on the Polk Indians of Missouri, and they were a very dark complexion uh, Indian group of people or Native American uh, 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 indigenous people. Uh, this elder was absolutely beautiful. And when I looked at the painting of the Polk, Missouri Indians, this man was a complete, a complete twin of the paintings that were, give, that were painted back in the 1800s. Ooh, okay? Wow. Wow. I've, just, I've, I've never, I have never seen another person look like this. And you wouldn't, wouldn't believe that he, he actually existed. And I was so proud to meet him. Mm. And when I spoke to him, he wouldn't tell me his age because mm. most native people are going to look at you like, oh, are you speaking to a native here? Mm -hmm. And uh, he told me that uh, his brother was taking care of his mother. Mm. Okay. So uh, um, we need to understand there is a greater history here that has been taken away from us. We need to do the research. We need to stop following the conquerors information, their, their, their interpretation, okay? There's another book that people can uh, pick up. Uh, hold, that, hold that thought. All right. Because we're going to have to take a break. I'm so sorry. Okay. No, it's okay. All right, so we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Okay, we're back. And so now... Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the something that we spoke about before, the Olmec connection to the East Coast uh, Miccosukee. Okay. Well, the Miccosukee people are basically uh, 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 connected with the uh, Choctaw uh, and the, the uh, Seminole, uh, specifically the Seminole. Uh, uh, when we're dealing with the Olmec society, uh, when that society was destroyed, uh, the descendants of that, or the, the, that which was left, they migrated to the north. And the Chalagi and the different uh, native eastern coastline people are really descendants of that ancient culture. Now, uh, if anyone has done any research whatsoever and looked at the great, uh, the, the carved heads uh, that were found in South America and, and, and Central. Uh, Central America. Uh, we look at the, ne as they use the terminology, Negroid features, the thick lips, the, the, the wide uh, 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 nose, uh, and these sorts of things. These people were here thousands of years ago. They, they make it appear that it was only about 2,000, but that's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, anything dealing with our cultures are, is always cut in half in terms of the time uh, 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 of that they were about. Uh, but we, uh, when there was an uprising in the Olmec uh, society, they came up into uh, the descendants were uh, of, of Chalagi uh, uh, 
background and uh, that is in some of our ancient stories, those who really know the truth of, of, of the matter. Mm. Okay, uh, their uh, priesthood had caused a problem which we call the uh, Anigutani. Uh, the Anigutani also caused problems again uh, 500 years prior to Christopher Columbus uh, showing up in Americas. And a lot of our culture deals with the fact of that, uh, the priesthood uh, causing problems as they have done in many indigenous cultures in order to keep the, the higher knowledge away from the average uh, individual of the tri uh, tribe. So um, this is research that any of you, if you wish to do, uh, will find out that this is also a truth that is usually kept underground. Um, so we have about um, two minutes and change. So mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about something because I noticed in the comments section regarding the show, mm -hmm. um, there was some statements made mm -hmm. about the Pequots mm -hmm. and how they got started. And it was pointed out that there was uh, some misinformation. And I know you have the correct information. Can you talk about it? We have one minute. Can one minute. OK, I'm going to try and go as quickly as I possibly can. Um, the, the amount of monies that were uh, brought to uh, the uh, Pequot Reservation uh, uh, came from an organization called the Genting Organization. Uh, it, a, a billionaire uh, a person from China uh, gave the money to uh, uh, the Pequot uh, Reservation for them to start the uh, casino situation in the first place. Mm. Uh, this is so an, it wasn't Gaddafi? It had nothing at all to do with the deceased Gaddafi. Nothing to do with Muslims, nothing to do with Arabs. It came from Malaysia. Malaysia is the place where this money came from. Now, the tribe got into all this trouble because they did not pay back this uh, 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 billionaire from China, okay? Then, uh, through the non-education of these individuals who were in charge of the tribe at the time, uh, they kept on taking out loans and... Um, uh, 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 bonds and all sorts of things and mismanaged the money and put the tribe into two point, I think, eight million billion dollars in debt. Wow. Two point eight billion. They nearly lost the land. Why? Because they were not educated to the to the, the ways of finances, the trilateral commission and everything else that is necessary when you deal in these types of, of, of situations. Wow, so that's I'm glad we cleared that up, and mm -hmm. that's why um, I always say, you know, the points and views of our guests are not the points and views of the show, okay? And I'm glad that you cleared that up, you know, mm -hmm. because there was you know, on on YouTube uh, there was some people who you know um, pointed out that the if the the monies didn't come from Gaddafi. And mm -hmm. uh, thank you, uh, people in YouTube land, who pointed out that information, because we definitely don't want to have any uh, misinformation coming forth, um, you know. And Blue Sky, yes, it was a pleasure mm -hmm. having you on the show. I really wish we had more time. I do, too. And uh, there will be definitely other occasions. I would like to also say to you, my uh, brothers and sisters uh, who watch this uh, production, this brother here is bringing you the truth. Every day of his life, it's about bringing the truth. Bring your brothers, your family members, and have them watch this brother. For, for he is from the heart doing his best to bring the truth to the people. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And uh, on that note, oh, man, thank you, and, and I appreciate your presence. I am grateful. Okay. All right. So 
another show. And I hope you enjoyed to this evening's program. And until the next time, da-da-da, go ha'in.